Welcome back to another edition of the Down and Back Cornhole Podcast. I almost said the old name. It's been Trey. Like I think you're like double digits here now for coming on the show because we're I gotta be at least. Separate. I'm at least eight, so I'm at least no, eight. I think counting the counting the two games that we don't want to think about. Um, I oh, think if we count those, I'm definitely double digits. Definitely because, well, double digits. And, well, and there is there is a third game that no one knows about that the camera didn't work for. So ah, okay, that's good, good, good. That's so, good for you, Doug. Yeah. That's good for so, you. So as everyone can see, I have the global traveler. He's, I'm going to point this way. The global traveler says he was on a cornhole tour, but I think he was on a Disneyland theme park tour instead. <laughs> Mister Playwriter. Ah, uh, you found you found us out. You have found us out, Doug. So yep. yes, my my wife's Disney obsession is becoming a worldwide phenom. So um, you know, there's only there's only like uh, there's only twelve Disney parks in the world. We've now been to eight of them. So only like, only have four to go. So if you if you know where those other four parks are, get ready to go to an ACL tournament there because there's probably one going. There. <laughs> There's Shanghai and Tokyo. You better believe in within five years I'll be going to Tokyo. I book it, promise. Yeah, it, this has been just a crazy year for Court Hall. I know I've I've did the most traveling. My wife is happy that I'm gone. It's just it's having me gone that much time, <laughs> but it's 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 been it's been a, a wild year for Cornhole here. Not just Canada and U.S., but just throughout the world. Yeah, I mean, it was it was cool. It was so cool to be in Europe. I mean, it was my first time in Europe, but to be in Paris and to see 17 countries all traveled from all across the world in one arena competing in cornhole, it was it was eye opening. It was it was just so amazing to see and amazing how far that we've come in a short amount of time. I mean, and to see how the different countries are getting better. And like, it's amazing. Like I see a lot of the European countries like in a position where Canada was a year and a half ago, right? Maybe two years ago, right? You saw a lot of players coming in. It was just, they were having a good time. You know, they're, the bags weren't the prettiest, but they were, they were in the right direction, right? They were on the board. They were around the hole. And, um, and, and see how they elevate. And every once in a while, they have a really good game. But, you know, there was some inconsistency. But now you look at, like, some of the top pros in Canada, and they're really good. I mean, it's amazing when I look yep. at Brandon Brown and I look at Bernie Portolesi and I look at a lot of these other top Canadian pros that are traveling to the events and even traveling internationally now, um, how good they really are. And they really are going toe-to-toe with those in the U.S. So it's – it's so much fun to watch and see the growth and, you know, seeing the start of it um, in Canada. And it reminded me, being at that tournament reminded me a lot of last year, kind of when I was in Niagara Falls. Um, obviously, Niagara Falls was a bigger event. They have a bigger, you guys have a bigger player base now than in Europe. But it was cool just to kind of see the startings of the rapid growth that that's, that's about to hit Europe. Mm-hmm. So we touched on ACL Canada a bit, and and there's there's been some stuff going on here, and and told a few people I was going to be talking to you today. We kind of talked a bit off air here. The one question was, what's going on with the 32 Canadian pros? And I was like, I think I know what the answer is going to be, and I I think you're about to say that answer right now. <laughs> yeah, well, we're almost ready to announce. So so Todd Kisicki um, has done a great job building a, an incredible international pro program. And um, this international pro program will obviously include Canadian pros. It will obviously include uh, pros from Europe as well. And so ultimately, what we want to do is, you know, we want to introduce more Canadian Opens this coming year, right? Um, it'll be more than what we had this past season, um, maybe close to half of what we do in the United States. That That's a little bit of a hint. Um, and so the idea is these Canadian Opens would bring together all the players across Canada. And then the idea is that each one of these, um, Todd maybe get a little bit mad that I'm previewing this ahead of time, but I know you guys are clamoring for information. So um, the idea is to feature the top pros uh, in Canada that are Canadian international pros 
in their own way uh, at all of these opens. So you'll still have your traditional events that you have at open events, but the idea is an additional added event that has some live stream coverage that has some additional incentive for these top pros to compete in uh, across the entire season. So um, that gives you a little bit of an insight there, Doug, is to, you know, having, having dedicated uh, these, these uh, Canadian pro events throughout the year. Um, and they're still working with, with, uh, on the, on the final number of, of how many pros there will be and, and how they're qualified, but certainly, um, you know, uh, all of that information will be released shortly. And um, another thing that's cool is, you know, we want to amp up the, the live stream coverage of a lot of these open events, these Canadian open events. So, you know, things like uh, uh, airing more at ACL Cornhole TV. ACL Cornhole TV is becoming now we want it to be an international platform, a place where people can stream to that. So um, you're going to be taking a much bigger role in that streaming. So um, obviously you're working some social media this year and now this year, this coming year, transitioning you more into a, a live stream role and be able to bring people live Canadian cornhole from all across the country. Um, and I think that's going to be really important to continue to build the ACL Canada brand and reach more and more people. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, and that's something like we, you know, we'd met, you and I met about a month ago and we kind of, we came to the mutual thing that maybe the social media side wasn't the best for, for me, if anyone's seen my Instagram or, or TikTok, they know that it's been a long time since I've done any of that stuff. So I'm probably better suited that there. So a lot of people were like, what, you know, working with ACL can I had a couple of people that wanted to stop playing ACL. I was like, no, don't do that. Just wait. We're going to talk. But yeah, it's, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that to be able to go, you know, <clears throat> possibly across the country. We're not sure yet. Or even just to kind of do some other, some other stuff with, with getting to know some of these other players. Cause that was my one big thing with, with going to, to St. John's, I was able to finally see some of those players in person. I was able to put some of them in my 32 predictions because after seeing them there, but, but then even seeing like, you know, just doing help with the live feed stuff when I was down in, uh, in, in Rock Hill at the finals. Well, now that we're talking about all these, these new rookies that are coming in or, or these other new players, I was able to, to call their games, see how they're, they're playing on the board. So it's just, you know, just that's, that's what I like about the live feed stuff. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that I'm able to keep doing it and, and, uh, and, and doing some more. Yeah, you got you got your fill at world at the world championships. That is for sure. You got you were in there for a while. You were calling all a lot the, of games there. <laughs> the the one morning I thought I could sleep in. I was like, oh, I'm you know what? I'm gonna I'm not gonna go to the venue till like ten o'clock. And then I get the message from like Wally at like quarter to eight saying, We need you here at like eight thirty, and it's like okay, I'm 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 on my way. I'm not that far, but <laughs> but yeah, and that's you know, it's it's you know, Bernie Bernie going, you know. Bernie talks lots, lots. We knew that that was going to happen, but then Miguel started playing. So I was in with Corey doing that there. And, uh, and, and I think, I think I want to do some more stuff with Corey because I like his telestrator that he has. I was, I felt more professional talking with that telestrator that he had. Yeah. Corey's got all the buttons and bells and whistles. I mean, uh, I'm excited. Corey is going to be co-producing the draft coming up October 6th through 8th, our pro teams draft here in the States. Um, he's going to be co-producing that with Chase Hunter. And so the two of them are going to put on a really, really good show. I'm excited for that and give Wally an opportunity to be front of camera. So Wally and Anthony and Michelle, um, you know, going to be delivering some, some, uh, and Jeff, um, going to be delivering some really good stuff. And then, uh, Bernie will be our MC and I'll, I'll get to maybe, you know, walk around and not, and not have to push buttons all day, uh, for, for a change. Well, yeah, and that's and that's, and that's a, that, and that was the other great thing is is while I was down there, I was able to kind of see some behind the scenes stuff with the with the the backstage during some of the broadcasts and just all the stuff that's kind of going on there. It's just it's it's a it's a well oiled machine. I'll I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's we're getting there, right? We're getting there. It's been a long time coming, it, and it comes in baby steps. It comes and it comes in waves. So. Um, you know, just try to get better each and every year, try to get better each and every event and you learn things and you make adjustments and you just keep grinding away and, and uh, you, you, you get towards a better place. And and the other thing I learned is I have to learn how to throw a bag of corn nuts because I absolutely suck at it. <laughs> there, okay. So it's hard. So when you're doing those, 
The problem is you go to throw it and it like adjusts and it like almost slips out of your hand. It doesn't go very far. It may, it'll make you look yeah. dumb real quick. You have oh, to I, I, it is a very tough thing to throw. You almost have to like bunch it in a ball and throw it that way. Yeah. It's it 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 reminded me of me playing that I'm thinking I'm going like row 13. I hit row two. It's just throwing those corn dogs right short. But it's you know, but then you figure you have to throw them like a frisbee. And almost take people's heads off. Just hope that they're actually looking. Yeah, if you, the problem is if you throw it hard enough, you might hit someone right in the head. So it's yeah. it is a difficult it is a difficult skill to throw some corn nuts. I'll tell you that. Exactly. Yeah. So back to some of the more more important stuff here. But because we're going back with ACL cam, we kind of talked a bit about this off air, and and I've you know been kind of telling people that yeah, we have been a little it's a little slower coming out with this info, but for the for the thirty two pros or whatnot. But we've got to think that th these th these first, I'm going to say first two years, are not going to be smooth with this here. I'm thinking we're, we're, it's it's it wasn't smooth in the states when when you guys first started out, and you know that and I and I keep talking because we had talked before a long a long time about this, is that you know ACL had a 10 year plan for Canada. What we're doing now is probably what was thought about for year five or six. Like we are way ahead of where we even dreamed the ACL would be in Canada. Yeah, I mean it's good good problems to have, right? Growing growing pains, as we like to call them. So, um, yeah, I, I think uh, you know each year you have to adjust, right? What, what's what's good is is when you get to that ultimate point, then you can keep executing what you're doing. Like even so, like we've kind of perfected here in the states like what the right number is. And we were able to push out things a year ahead of time with how we qualify our pro players. But even that, even like our elite division, which is now replacing PDC, that's gone all under changes year after year after year. Right. And it's because we try something, oh. meh, we, we kind of like it, but we need to tweak it a little bit. And so we need to make that change going into the next season. And so we are continually adjusting so that we can finally get that to that optimal point that we really, really like. We even do it with our pro teams. We do it with elite. So there's a lot of things to tweak. And the same can be true about the international uh, pro program, right? One thing to keep in mind, could we post right now the qualifications and everything that needs to be done in the entire format for 2025's international pro program? Yes, we could, right? We could sit down and make that 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 decision. But the reason that we don't do that is because because ACL Canada is still so young, because ACL Europe is still so young, sometimes you want to take baby steps and, and you want to be able to adjust in real time, right? We don't want to plan too far ahead with certain things because we may be looking at a completely different ACL Canada in a year because of where we are on our growth, right? Or we may get feedback on the program that we put out there for this year that, hey, we don't like it, or we want more of this and we want less of that, right? So mm -hmm. I think the key is for everyone uh, to understand that everything that we do is to make sure that we get to the best possible long-term solution. And sometimes that means being a little bit nimble from year to year. So um, what I would say is, you know, I, I've seen some of the full details of the international pro program for this coming year, and I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to give players a real opportunity to compete against the best players in their country, to possibly have an opportunity to compete against the best players in the world, and more importantly, continue to grow the individual leagues within these individual countries uh, to the best that they can be, including here in Canada. Exactly, and that's and that's what I keep saying to people is is that you know when when you look at the ACL Canada standings is that it's 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 filled with Ontario players right from the right the, the you know I think the first twenty there might be one person or even thirty might be one person outside of Ontario that's in it. I'm like, let's stop for a second here because you've got people like Sean and Amber in Newfoundland that their players get a chance at one regional a month that they can only play in to get their best finish, whereas in Ontario. We've got regional directors almost in every city. So there's like eight or 10 regionals that, that people can get their best finish. So they're always getting higher points for there. So standings are kind of skewed a bit because you've got, 
Dion Coos is 75th in Canada. I don't think Dion Coos is 75th in Canada. Sorry. It's, uh, you know, a, a guy that's, that's finished top Canadian at all three opens that we've had here, winning one of them. He's not the 75th player in Canada. Sorry. So it's, you know, once we can kind of get a little more balanced out everywhere, then then the standings will kind of start to kind of kind of make more light of who is the is is the better players. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. We again, we we go through the same thing in the United States for years and years and years. It was like this person wasn't the actual number one. That's what people would say. Blah blah blah. But. It's a reflection of a grind, right? The standing should yep. be a reflection of the grind and those that, yes, are great players, but also people that are playing in the events, they're showing up at events, they're going to these different mm-hmm. things. So it's a combination of the two. And obviously the more and more you, you grow in the, in the sport and in the, in the, uh, you know, uh, in the league, and you look at what we do in the United States, right? There's not a lot of doubt in anyone's mind that the best player this year was Tony Smith. And Tony Smith finished yep. number one, right? Alex Rawls, Mark Richards, you know, all those guys were one, two, three, four. They were right there at the top, right? And it's no surprise that those guys were there at the top. You'd argue that those are the four best players in the world or three best players in the world, right? Uh So, you know, it it gets refined. It gets better as time goes along. And there's there's, um, enhancements made every year to make things uh, the, the best that they can be. Exactly, and and like like we said, you know, the, the the number one player doesn't always win everything, as we've seen with the the run that that Jimmy Graham went on. Like I uh, I was lucky enough to to call some of his games with with Wally, and just he was possessed to 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 be on that run that he did. Yeah, Jamie Graham had a had a roller coaster of a year, but he finished as good as you possibly can. Wins a yep. world championship. You can't beat that. And nope. he becomes the second, I mean, sorry, he becomes the first player ever to win his second singles world championship. And I think it just speaks to his resiliency. It speaks to how strong mentally that he is. And it showcases to a lot of people that you have to have that exceptional mental game if you're going to win at the highest level. It's not just about talent. You have to be able to be mentally resilient and mentally focused a hundred percent of a tournament if you're going to win. And he, he just embodies that. And he's really showcased why he's, you know, one or two or three when on the all time greatest player list. Exactly. Yeah. So my other thing, cause now we're talking about the, the top players they thought there, because I've been talking with one of someone who runs some leagues here in Canada. And I was like, I'm going to bring this up with you because they they run their leagues on based on PPR. And I'm like, get away from that PPR stuff. They're just they're focused on because the best player is the one with the top PPR. I'm like, not always if you have a dirty game. So I said, I'm going to bring it up to you. So what's your thoughts on someone who will run a league with with just PPR? Because that I think that brings down people who have that dirty game. So, because because each one of their their league nights they they reset after each round with having the top PPR with a matched up with the bottom PPR if it's a doubles type of thing, and I was like, let just let it flow because that's going to make all of your players better instead of just kind of holding everything off on PPR. I'm thinking there's probably another stat out there that they could really utilize. Yeah, so um, I'm for – first, before I I even address – I'll just say I'm for all trying different formats and trying different things and see what works best for individual people because we do the same thing all the time with the ACL. We try stuff. We are not afraid to try things. If if we go down as a sinking ship, it's not because we weren't – it's not because we were afraid to try anything. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. so trying everything and finding the right format that, that works for everybody, I'm all in favor of. Now, when it comes to statistics, yeah, that's everybody's favorite debate is PPR versus DPR, right? Or, yeah. or, or any other stat that you can think of. And I, I feel pretty strongly that, that PPR is a great relative tool over, um, for, for a quick evaluation of a player. Right. I know 
right offhand, if someone throws a 9.5 PPR, that they're pretty darn good, right? I know if someone throws a 4 PPR, they're probably a novice player just getting into it or or need some more time or or just aren't great or you know aren't at the competitive or advanced level, right? Right out of the gate, I can compare and say, okay, I know what a decent PPR is. I know what a great PPR is, right? <laughs> However, when you look at something over the long term, right, or you're looking at it, um, uh, when you compare it directly one versus one, it, 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 it can't always be the best tool to direct uh, compare one versus one. And, and, and the same can be said for DPR, right? DPR um, really can be overly dependent on the skill level of your opponent. Yes, it can also be an indication of how good you are and how much you're beating opponents, but it also is greatly fluctuated and influenced by what your opponent does. So there's really no perfect stat. We are working uh, on releasing and will be releasing over the next couple months an ACL power rating that takes into consideration strictly, did you win, did you lose, and by how much, right? And so mm-hmm. once that rating is adjusted, and I'll tell you if you're trending up or trending down, that is going to be an ultimate tool for really gauging the skill level of someone that takes into consideration not only the players that will slide every bag in, but the players that like to play a defensive game. So, um, you know, going back to answer your question, I think there are instances in which PPR is a great evaluation tool. I think there are instances in which DPR is a great value evaluation tool. But there's times that either one cannot be great, right? If yeah. I look at someone across the entire year and I see they have a 9.3 versus a 9.7, I cannot tell you that which one of those players is better. The same can be true about a 0.5 DPR versus a 0.2 DPR because I don't know the level of competition that they were playing. I really believe it's a combination of, of PPR and DPR that really makes people a dominant force. If I see someone with a 9.2 PPR with a 0.5 DPR, that can be rather impressive. Same thing with a 7.5 PPR and a 1 DPR. Uh, That maybe just tells me that the player that they were playing didn't have the best level. And it doesn't mean that that 7.0 PPR is better because they have a higher DPR or vice versa. So, Everything requires context for me. I think it's fun to try different statistics and see what that work best for your league, but there's mm-hmm. not one that's an end all be all. Cuz I know I know for myself my uh my 5.51 going to the worlds was not good. But coming out of worlds, I'm not sure and some people at the KW league have, have, have kind of noticed but I'm not sure if it was osmosis by me watching the players, but I've come back from worlds and I'm throwing like over a seven if you were to, if you were to really look at it now. So, but, but it doesn't show in the, in the PPR stats because when you've done so poorly for so long, it takes a while, it'll drop quick, but it takes a while to get that PPR to go up. So that's, that's always what my thing is that just the PPR can be a bit deceiving if, if a player has improved. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. You got, you hit the nail on the head and it, and, and statistics can sometimes lie to us. They do it. They do it in other sports. They can do it in cornhole. Exactly. Yeah. So, I uh, I know you've got a you got a hard come a hard finish here. I've got a hard finish coming up here. But uh, I want to thank you for coming on and talking. And I'm thinking we may be talking again very soon about some stuff that might be happening. So all we can say is that it might be. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to happy to come back on once the once the full, um, you know, international program is released. We can talk a little bit here and, and talk about all the exciting things that, that Canada has. And uh, I think it's going to be a big, big year for, for ACL Canada. Exactly. And for anyone who's watching, who's now going to come and ask me, when are those dates? When are those dates? I know exactly what he said here is all he's told me. He hasn't told me anything else. <laughs> I haven't told I, Doug he likes to squat. Me, he likes me being a mushroom, just kept in the dark and fed it a whole lot of you know what. So 
Yeah. But uh, exactly. But again, again, Trey, thanks for coming on and doing this here. Uh, it's it's always great having you on and, and being able to talk and, and pick your brain about some stuff. But uh, I see some many many big things coming up, and uh, and just to let you know, my wife is also a, a Disney fanatic. So if you need some help going there with live feeds, you know, it's uh, could help me getting getting the tournaments. Just say deal, deal. Okay. And I want to thank Trey Ryder for coming on the show. A little more teasers than I thought we were going to get on ACL Canada stuff. He's usually kind of like, no comment. We'll let other people talk about it. But now we find out we could be having a lot of stuff. Big tournaments here in Canada coming up. A lot of them. Just saying. Uh, and then as he kind of announced there, I finally cats out of the bag. I am going to be part of the live feed team. So I'll be kind of working alongside with Wally and, and Corey down in the States. Uh, to uh, to bring some stuff up here in Canada. Can't wait getting some, possibly some new cameras to so be able to do some zooming in and kind of panning around. It's not just going to be those other ones where it's a long shot. Uh, some new equipment there. So it's things are looking up for live feeds here in Canada as well as some of the down and back stuff. We'll start to be doing some, some Patreon stuff or, or even some subscriber stuff to uh, to have some extra viewing pleasure for you to uh to be watching some of the cornhole stuff up here uh gotta give a shout out sponsors to help out this show i cannot do this without their help in uh, in getting stuff going getting your boards jc cornhole jc cornhole.com check out jamie he sent a message he may give you something little if you say that you've seen it here on the down and back never know also, local cornhole bags. Local, look, right? It's like a recording now, right there. Localbagcompany.com. Check out Mr. Meek and his bags. His bags are fantastic. Uh, we we give them away. We give away a couple sets. Got some people who've gotten some hoodies coming up because of the uh, their subscriber contest wins. We're getting close to 550 subscribers, which means another contest. And I got the bags right here in my hand, right, right here. What are we, about 20 subscribers away, I believe, to 550, and we will be giving away a set of local legend bags. How about those bags right there? Because, you know, when you play with local bags, what happens to the competition? Game over. Yes. So these are the bags that will be up for the 550 subscriber contest. All you have to do is tell your friends, family, subscribe. Another set of another set of free bags for just hitting a subscribe on a YouTube show. It's simple. It's easy. Then if you're in the Edmonton, Alberta area, Sherwood Park to be exact. Possibly going for some cornhole there. Not sure yet. We'll wait to see. Check out Sierra Property Inspections. Check out Darren. He's on Facebook. Give him a, a like and, uh, and and share some of his stuff. He will uh, send a message. He'll help you out in finding the perfect place to store cornhole boards in your house, whether you are got damp conditions or whatever. He'll check yourself out and uh, and really and help you out. Uh, and of course, as always, a portion of that will go to a children's cancer hospice in Edmonton. And then, now that you can get it online on the LCBO, Harris Beach Spirits Rye 51. Check this out. I will be picking some up at the Queenston uh, Duty Free on my way over to Coliseum in Buffalo to see Bobby Spirit in January. I'll be there. So. You're in Buffalo. I'm coming in January. Coliseum. Playing a little bit of cornhole. Uh, there, yeah. So that's that. Um, if you liked last Saturday night, did the live QA, 9 p.m. I believe we're going to do another one here coming up. If you're watching this here, coming up this week, we're going to try and do one every other week. 
we'll try and see her every week, depending on what's going on. We'll sit, have a guest come in. I had Donnie McPhee on, the voice of Cornhole. Last week, he may be on again this week. I'm not sure. Got to talk to him about some stuff, get some stuff set up. But I'll announce it on the Facebook page, announce it on the, I almost said Twitter, but it's like X now, and then the threads thing, that's kind of going, I'm not sure about Instagram. We, we You heard me talk to, to Trey about Instagram. I'm, I'm not the best social media guy. I like just getting this stuff out. I got to think of the other stuff. But that, so. With that here, I rambled on for another seven minutes with this show here. Put us up to, what, half an hour of your viewing pleasure. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. Let everyone else know about the show. We're getting a little bigger, a little better. we got some big things coming up. I want to tell you about them, but we're going to wait. Week to week, you'll find out. We're going to be talking, we're going to be going outside, off-continent with some stuff coming up here very soon. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be having some fun. So just go out there, have some fun throwing bags, and hopefully you'll be getting an email at some point this week if you're in Canada that you're a pro. Hopefully they're coming up. Uh, I believe, like, like, like a trade kind of said, some stuff is coming up. So if that's coming out, if it's out this week, congrats to you. If not... There's still a couple qualifiers that are coming up. So you've still got other chances to uh, to make it in the pro rank. So all 32 will not be sent out emails this week. From what I know, there's still some pro, other pro qualifiers that are coming up. So if someone tells you they know all 32 right now, they're part of the McFly family because they are coming back from the future. If they already know that. So again, have some fun throwing bags. If you're out throwing bags, make sure they're local. Some bags out there. My PPR, like I said, my PPR. I may have learned from osmosis at the Worlds. I'm doing like over sevens now. Maybe, maybe, just maybe you'll have a chance to beat Trey. So, yeah. So, have some fun throwing bags. I'm out of here. You will see me on a show here next week. Hopefully, we'll have a guest. If not, check me out. On uh, Saturday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, Facebook, and here on the YouTube live chat. Just sit and have have a talk. Maybe you might even get invited to the after show party thing that we have. You never know. 